Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and somebody sent me this a couple of photographs and wanted to know how they could get a vector line around this to test on this plaque, and I've already done it, and it's, I think it's dead on. I'm not gonna do it for them, I'm just gonna show them some suggestions. And um, so what I do is get the picture, and I just did a video just the other day about this, get the picture relatively square and a little parallel to Corel. Then I'm gonna double click on the picture. I'm gonna bring that rotation to that corner. I'm gonna make sure I'm pretty close. And then I'm gonna, I got, you have to, because it's a photograph, you have to click on the picture and use this rotation and just kind of watch right there. It's move it minutely. And what I like about this, you can go back and let's go, let's see what happens about two degrees and see that's the opposite. So we need one degree. So the picture is just one degree off. So we're good and flat now. We can get rid of that. And let's, uh, my delete key is right near my um, calculator. So then let's go to the crop tool and let's crop this guy and move your edges. He was asking how you could, I mean, I just did a video the other day about cropping, but this is a weird shape, but I've also done a video on uh, cropping items like this. So with the crop tool, you can move that down. And if you know your measurements, he told me that the measurement across was 11.25. So with the crop tool, we're pretty close. And for the video, that's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna crop it. Now I know that it's 11.25 across. This picture is 34 with this lock. 11.25, and it scaled it down. And also what I did, I erased my work because I did not have it selected. I erased my, what I needed. And so you need to have something selected before you crop or you'll delete everything on the page. Let's zoom in here. Once you've selected it, it doesn't really, it, it'll stay selected. But you just need the one measure. What it, when he does this for himself, he needs to have two measurements to make sure that that is, when you, when you crop the width, that you also crop the length. And I'm, I'm having a little trouble with the picture right here snapping. So there's a good point, let's turn Snap to object off and see if that helps. And it's still doing it. So it's because it's not really an object. It's a photograph. And there are several ways to get around this, but we're going to just minutely. All right, we're there. So. We're gonna go, we're good enough. We're, I could be a little bit better on the side. We're gonna crop. And you can see, since I had it selected, I kept everything else on my page. So I think I said 11.25. So now my plaque is the size it would be. And this is pretty important because he's gonna have to write on an arch text to path. This pretty much you can get it dead on. I'm not gonna do this perfectly, but what is so neat about the crop tool, you can use the shape tool and I'm gonna add some nodes. And I'm gonna delete that node in the middle, delete that node in the middle. I'm gonna turn all three of these nodes to curves. And I'm gonna bring this node back. Now this is, Tedious, but 
it'll really help you do your engraving. And you could spend a little bit of time, and since you have a picture, and next time I would suggest taking a picture on a whiteboard or a blackboard, something you can see besides that tile. And then you just, well, what you would want to do is turn these two into a line. Tell you what, let's turn all four of these into a line. Well, you can't do that, but we can do it without. Turn that one into a line. Evidently, it's already a line, but you'd want to bring your handles. And this isn't that big a deal. So now you've got your item, and you could spend a little bit more time to get it perfect. But how did I get that? I'm going to control D and make a duplicate of it. And let's nudge it over. And then I'm going to trace a bitmap, but I didn't turn it into a bitmap. I just going to trace it and see what happens, being that it's a wood color, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, I didn't turn it into a bed map, but I got a brown box. I'm gonna make the box black, and I'm going to zoom in here. And remember, this is a trace, so we ought to be able to left click, right click, and we got some garbage. But here's kind of the secret. Take this apart, object, group, ungroup, and use the border, create a boundary tool, nudge that over. I mean, look at that right there. Now what's so cool about this, you've got a pretty good product already. Control D and make a duplicate and then mirror it. And then I, he told me this measurement is like 9.25, I think. So we could take the, the virtual segment, or not the parallel dimension tool, and look at that, it's 9.55, whatever he said it was. So now we're pretty good, and we can take the smart fill tool and fill that in. Nudge our smart fill away, left click, right click in red. And it's probably not a perfect shape, but you'd want to maybe, you could cut this out on the laser. I would leave that center node and delete all these other nodes. By leaving that center node, it should have the same curvature as it did before. You don't have to mess with these nodes. It didn't change anything. We've got an awful lot of nodes, but you're not gonna be using this for cutting out. You're gonna be using this just for a, a template in your laser to lay it down and then put your wood on top of it to make sure it fits. And you could do a lot with this. I mean, this curvature is pretty good. And because we mirrored it, we know the curvature is pretty even. Control D, mirror it sideways. I mean, we're off just, just that much. Anyway, I hope that helped him a little bit. And thank you for watching.